the last few videos, we learned about the challenges associated with believing the brain is the sole causative factor in the formation of a person's knowledge, beliefs, and emotions. We also concluded that the idea of consciousness as a separate entity from the brain and body is essential to rationally explain free will. Now, let's discuss the question you may be asking. Is there any scientific evidence to support the idea of consciousness being a separate entity from the brain and body? As we discussed in episode 5, everything in the universe must follow the principle of conservation of substance. That means something cannot be created out of nothing, and something cannot turn into nothing. Instead, everything in the universe undergoes constant change. Some of the body's attributes do not cease to exist after death, but they simply change their form as the matter particles disintegrate. But what happens to attributes of living beings or consciousness, such as knowledge, beliefs, and emotion? Conservation of substance means that they must survive in a different form as well. According to Jain philosophy, consciousness unites with a different body either as human or a different species after the death of its previous body. So, the existence of consciousness would be proven if we can find evidence of a person's knowledge, beliefs, or emotions surviving after their death. The late Dr. Ian Stevenson, an internationally renowned psychiatrist, established the Division of Perceptual Studies at the University of Virginia School of Medicine. He spent a major part of his career traveling, researching, and investigating cases of children claiming to remember their past lives. To collect data, Dr. Stevenson methodically documented the children's statements about their previous lives. Then, he would identify the deceased person the child claimed to be and research the facts of the deceased person's life, including their medical records. In many of the cases, he was able to match the child's statements with the identity of the deceased person. His strict methodology ruled out all possible normal explanations for the child's memories, including the possibility of fraud, fantasy, faulty memory, genetic memory, and knowledge acquired through normal means. The child psychiatrist Dr. Jim Tucker at the University of Virginia School of Medicine has continued Dr. Stevenson's research regarding rebirth. In all of these cases, the children have displayed their knowledge of a past life in the form of previous memories, beliefs about them being a previous personality, and emotions in the form of attachment to their previous life. In his book, Life Before Life, Children's Memories of Previous Lives, Dr. Tucker summarizes his research from 2,500 cases of children with past life memories. Dr. Tucker argues that viewing yourself as a fundamental, non-material part of the universe makes it possible to conceive consciousness as continuing to exist after the death of the brain. He uses the analogy of a signal decoder and television transmission. The signal decoder is required to interpret and express the signal, but it does not create the signal. In a similar way, the brain may be instrumental for expressing knowledge or awareness, but may not be the source of knowledge in itself. Dr. Tucker further concludes that the idea of rebirth from one life to the next appears to be the best explanation of the evidence from this research. Similarly, another researcher, Dr. Brian Weiss, has performed extensive research on rebirth using past life regression therapy. According to Dr. Weiss, in 1980, one of his patients, Catherine, began discussing past life experiences while undergoing hypnosis for anxiety and depression. Dr. Weiss did not believe in reincarnation at the time, but after confirming elements of Catherine's stories through public records, he was convinced of the survival of an element of the human personality after death. Dr. Weiss has regressed more than 4,000 patients since 1980. He advocates hypnotic regression as a therapy for phobias and other psychiatric ailments, claiming that many of these are rooted in past life experiences and therefore 
this awareness and recognition by the patient becomes integral for having a curative effect. After learning and understanding this concept of rebirth scientifically, you may wonder, why do most people not have any recollection of memories from their past lives? Most of us tend to either remember things learned through frequent repetitions over time, or remember significant moments associated with strong emotions in our current life. Most people do not have any memories from early childhood when they were infants and toddlers. However, these memories can be recalled to the conscious mind using psychoanalytic techniques such as hypnosis. Similarly, as documented by Dr. Weiss in his research, people may also remember or recall memories of their past lives due to certain triggers in early childhood or even adult life. From the above research, we can conclude that 1. Consciousness survives death and is a separate entity from material worldly things, including the body as well as the brain. 2. Consciousness, or jeev, is a fundamental and eternal substance of nature, which includes attributes such as knowledge, belief, conduct or emotions, and happiness. 3. The brain processes information received from the senses and facilitates the expression of knowledge, beliefs, and emotions occurring within consciousness. Based on the teachings of Tirthankar Mahaviraswami, the great Jain Acharya Pujapad has documented details about past life memories or Yatismaranyan in his treatise Sarvartha Siddhi around the 5th century CE. Now that we have established the concept of consciousness being a separate but coexisting entity within the body, in the next video it is time to investigate natural and unnatural modes of consciousness that would allow us to understand our stressful behavior. Feel free to leave your questions in the comment section. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.